What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're back in Space Engineers, and given that I haven't done anything weaponized for a little while yet, I decided I'd go back and revisit some of my old missile designs. Uh, so, what we've got in front of me here is what I'm deciding to call the Death Lotus, and that'll become apparent as to why somewhere down the line, but uh, for those of you who've seen any of my previous videos, some parts of this are going to be familiar. It's got bits and bobs taken from all within. It's also got some sort of up-to-date, more modern pieces. So as with my recent videos, I'll just jump straight in and show you how it works and what it does. So jumping in here, we got a sort of fire and forget system. The cockpit is purely for the video's sake. There is a camera and a remote control, and the idea would be you'd line up your shot like this outside of uh, antenna range or even right at the edge of antenna range like this, and then you would turn the antenna off so you're not visible. But we're not going to do that this time, just for the sake of ease. I'm just going to line myself up, and at the far end there we have uh, a little tea party set up for us to shoot at. I uh, don't know what the Reds are up to, but they're in trouble. So jumping back to our main ship, we're just going to hit one, fire and forget, and then jump out and watch it as it goes. So hit one there, and I'm going to jump out and follow this down, and I can explain as we go a little bit about what exactly it's doing. So... Right now it's accelerating and after a little while, sort of distance it would need to carry a ship, uh, to clear the ship it was ca uh, carrying it, it is going to start to spin. And as it spins, it is going to accelerate up to maximum speed, again on another timer. And as soon as that happens and these projections have lined up, it's going to start welding away. Uh, and it's going to turn the merge blocks on and off and we're going to slowly release these little contraptions out the side of the ship and it's going to create a sort of a flower-like pattern, essentially. They're going to come out in little arms, and because of the, the timing dropping them off the same time on the same time each rotation, they're going to slowly make this sort of field of little arms, and the more of them we get, the more obvious it gets. And at the same time, we're sort of still hurtling our way towards this enemy base, and as I said, with the antenna off, the warning they'd get would be pretty much nothing. So you've launched this out in space and what we're going to do in a second is just jump over to the view from the other end so that we can see this coming in because there's not a huge amount left to do on, on this end until impact. There are a few little tricks left still as well but uh, I'll get onto that once we get to the far end of things so how close are we now? Getting suitably close that I'll hit the dampers and jump in this end and as you can see the antenna was off at this point I, I know they're that direction but I can't really see it. Oh there we go little glints just came into view. If the antenna was on, then you'd get the single antenna warning, which I, I think is, even that's not as scary as it should be when you see what's actually incoming. And this is going to come down, and soon enough it's going to be in range of the turrets, and the decoys and so on are going to start doing their work. So we should start getting an armed response. There we go, the first things are starting to shoot back, and the first little bits in the sort of the cloud are starting to die, but it's not going to be enough to prevent the main ship itself from going straight in, along with a massive deploy deployment of carpet bombs. And if we just run over and have a little look at the damage caused, I can see we've got holes in that ship, even though it's way over there. And I'm pretty certain that the main projectile actually missed. I'll switch to some footage I've got over, because obviously I've tested this a number of times and against sort of different layouts. So I'll switch to some footage to show what it's like when the main sort of projectile itself actually connects with the station. But this was just the the damage caused by the carpet bomb side of things. I'm pretty certain that the, um, the main projectile made one of these holes down here, which means it won't have done what it was supposed to do. So jumping back to this world again, I'll reload it and then I can tell you a little bit about exactly what's happening as we get in towards the target and demonstrate that, as well as show you the, the footage I mentioned of this in proper action. So it's back in the world again and First of all, a little bit about how it's sort of all put together. I had to think quite a lot about how to arrange everything in here because I wanted to, firstly, and for some bizarre reason, I decided I wanted to make it survival capable. So everything is actually, everything cargo related for the welders and everything is in this center position here with a connector set up so that if you wanted to, you could mount it onto a ship and then reload it before firing. Uh, and I've done that up here. And the only reason I didn't use this to actually demonstrate there is because for some reason, when you merge onto another ship and then release it, it screws up all the projectors and you have to set them up all over again in order to get it to actually build the things. So it's it's kind of a little bit clunky. It could still be used, you'd use the ship to carry it in position and then you'd release it and remote control fire the thing. But unfortunately it's not quite as elegant as you can fire it from on board the ship, which would be cool, but with how projectors and permissions are functioning, it, it's unfortunately just not possible. But we have that side of things, so we then have 
the sort of multi-stage portions of this. So at the front end here, we have this front block, which is taken straight from my breechcraft, essentially. Uh, heavy armor front section, antenna to help actually pierce into the target, and trust me, they do help. And then we have uh, these sensors I've got turned off because they were causing issues. Um, again, when you separate things on merge blocks, the permissions play around. And when you create things with projectors, the permissions are a bit weird. And what it meant was that these sensors were actually triggering off my own decoys. And it wasn't really working like I intended. So all of these sensors here, um, that one there, and there's one on the back you can ignore. They don't do anything. Um, but the ones that do do something, there is one on the front here. Uh, that is set to max range. And when that sees something, it triggers a timer block. So it's the front separation sensor, max range, large ships and stations only. And it will trigger its response block. And the timer setup for this is pretty complex. So let's go down here. We have This is the timer setup. And basically... I, as I've mentioned in the past, I thought through it in order. What do I want it to do, and what are the constraints, and what are the concerns? So this first one was all about making sure that it had cleared the craft that it was being shot from. So this is the one that turns the merge off. It toggles those rear thrusters on, which are set to thruster override, and then it starts this timer. And this is the timer that turns all the sensors on and starts the ship spinning by overriding gyro. But you didn't want that to happen until it cleared the craft. So I gave it six seconds to clear the craft, and then we move on to number three. Now this is the timer that I mentioned that waits for the craft to get to max speed. So this waits for it to be doing 104 meters a second so all the projections line up correctly. Then you have the, the weld and release sort of combo and these just go back and forward they're very straightforward um, it turns the merge blocks on and off the welders are on pretty much constantly uh, and the merge blocks just get turned on and off um, it takes it one second to weld it and then two seconds for it to get out of the way because of the spinning action and then the final timers on here are for the sensors and the sensors and the way they respond and this is where it gets a bit weird so this one is designed to be trigger now, and that's how it's activated. It's activated by that sensor on the front. And what it does is it turns on all the other front sensors and disconnects the front end. Ah, now this is interesting. These are the wrong way around. Uh, I, I should have had the timer start first, but it's not gonna have any real impact. Either way, it's gonna disconnect the front end and then it's gonna start the middle bit kicking off. Now the middle bit, just here, turns off those rear thrusters so the rear part of the craft starts to slow down and then it disconnects the back and triggers the back's response so that means the middle part separates from the front because it slowed down a bit and then the merge box release the middle part as well so the middle part is separate and it continues on its way still welding up the decoys and the warheads and then the final part is this rear response here which toggles on a gyro and a sensor at the back now that sensor at the back is the one that i talked about having disabled at the moment because it was causing issues it's not necessary um, but basically what it is, this rear section here, so from these last merge blocks, separates and then very quickly tries to turn 180 degrees so that these warheads are then f at the front of the craft, unprotected because you're right next to the enemy ship at that point. And then the idea was the sensor was the sensor was going to activate it as soon as it saw a ship. End result is, of course, it often sees a ship that's mine and activates too early. So that, again, is, is not active at the moment. That part, you know, I'm working on slowly. But the end result is that this bit breaches in, this bit separately follows it afterwards, and this bit comes in last, still slowing itself down with the big explosion, which at that point is faced right into the internals of the craft, whatever it's being shot at. So that's kind of the sort of vague setup. Obviously, we also have a couple of projectors, one for each one of these rigs. And I made the, these are very, very simple to make. I literally just took a copy of this, cut those bits out so I just had this section and then built the the decoy bits on really straightforward little things I've got some examples of them over there uh, that is all those two blueprints are and as usual I'll upload this to the workshop this is why I've got these kicking around so people can make blueprints themselves and that is pretty much the layout of things it all relies on the spinning motion to spread that sort of web of explosions uh, this obviously didn't start like this. Uh, I actually had much, much more standard plans and designs, and I can use this one here to demonstrate the, uh, the response of that ship there. So uh, this was where it all began, uh, and this is the same sort of idea. You've got a couple of warheads. This craft in the middle is going to flip around 90 degrees when it sees a target, and these are going to ping off and distract the turret fire. And they're designed, they're overridden on the gyros so that the 
warheads that come off spin around like lunatics. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't really work quite like you'd want. Uh, if I, hopefully, this will actually work. There you go. You see, it would launch those. The sensor has detected that ship, and it launches. So, if you imagine that these thrusters were actually on. The plan was that this central projectile would continue on into the craft, flip around when it all, just as it arrived, and these things would be busy hanging around the area and distracting the turret fire. And this does work, and again, I'll put a little clip of that in there. And then I, as usual, copy and pasted it onto its head to create a bigger version. That also works quite nicely. And then it all went a bit mad, and we ended up over here. Either way, I hope you found that one interesting, guys. I think this whole rotational force thing as a method of using merge blocks to create slightly different results is a pretty cool one. Uh, I also like the idea of integrating projectors like this into projectiles and into ships that are essentially disposable, but it means that they can start replicating as they travel. If you did find this interesting or you've got any comments or any ideas on how I can solve my... Um, ship ownership problem when I'm putting it on there, when it uh, separates out, then let me know. If you found this at all interesting, please hit that like button, please hit subscribe, really helps me and the channel out. And otherwise, thanks for watching guys, I will catch you next time.